This is Sports Bash Saturday with Josh Hennig, live from the Matt Black Kia Studios. Now, Sports Bash Saturday. Here's Josh Hennig. Half hour edition of Sports Bash Saturday here on 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hennig here with you live in the Matt Black Kia Studios. Of course, text board is open at 609 403 0973. Leading you up to the NFL triple header coverage beginning at 1230 with Westwood One Sports. Of course, Bills and Colts coming up at 1 o'clock. I'll run back for you my football Friday picks from last night's game night coming up. Uh, just about 20 minutes from now, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Use the promo code H-E-N-N-I-G. That's promo code Hennig when you sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook for all kinds of boost opportunities, including same game parlay insurance. Find out more about that with sportsbook.fanduel.com. Use promo code Hennig to sign up. But some breaking Sixers news just came down before I came live on the radio. And that is the 76ers will have a basketball game today. So the NBA and the Sixers were going all night long. There were all kinds of delays into them confirming if the Sixers would play today. And according to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Sixers are expected to have nine eligible players today, including the three cleared from protocol. Now, as of last night, they only had six guys who would be available. That six included uh, Dwight Howard and Ben Simmons. You need eight, according to the NBA rules, to have a game. Well, they're going to have nine. As the NBA has cleared three players out of the protocol. Those players are Joel Embiid, Danny Green, and Paul Reed. So the 76ers will have nine players today when they play the Denver Nuggets at uh, the Wells Fargo Center. And what's important to note is that part of the reason why there was a delay in this is because a Sixers staff member did test positive late last night, early this morning. So as a result, They had to do a whole nother round of contact tracing to confirm who would actually be available for today's game. As of right now, the players who are out today due to the health and safety protocols include Tobias Harris, Shake Milton, Matisse Thiable, and Vincent Poirier. So no Harris, Milton, Thiable, or Poirier for the foreseeable future. For those who don't know, the way the protocols work is that Once you have to go in the quarantine period, you have to remain in quarantine for typically five to 10 days, depending on if you're asymptomatic, depending on if you had a positive test, depending on a a couple different circumstances. And then you have to have consecutive negative tests in order for you to clear out of quarantine. So, for example, Tobias Harris, Shake Milton, Matisse Stiebel, and Vince Portier. They're not just not going to play today, but it's very likely they don't play Monday or Tuesday as well, depending on the circumstances of their protocols. For example, if Tobias Harris has been testing negative and he does not have COVID, he has just a positive, using Tobias as an example. So that means that depending on when the NBA established his quarantine period to start, that's when the five days initializes. So, for example, if the Sixers played Thursday night, let's say the quarantine for Tobias, the NBA says it started Friday. So you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Under the five-day rule, Tobias would not be allowed to play Monday or Tuesday's games against the Hawks or the Heat. So unless something changes, and we'll keep you updated here on 97.3 ESPN, and of course, don't forget, 97.3 ESPN.com, 97.3 ESPN Mobile App, our excellent team of Sixers Insiders, Paul Hudrick, Kevin McCormick, Jason Blevins. They'll have you with the full details on the website. But as of right now, the situation is the Sixers will have nine eligible players to play today. Those players are going to be Joel Embiid, Danny Green, and Paul Reed, who were activated out of the protocol. So they are in the clear. They can play today. They get to join Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons, Dwight Howard, and others. 
as the only nine players get to play today. The players who will not be playing, who are in the protocol for the foreseeable future, include Tobias Harris, Shake Milton, Matisse Thiable, and Vincent Poitier. And then the fifth player on that list as well is Seth Curry, but we know that's a confirmed positive test on his part. We don't have any information just yet about the other players. For more information on what is going on with this team, go to 973ESPN.com, the 973ESPN mobile app. But again, the Sixers will have a basketball game today. That's the breaking news that dropped about about a minute or two before I came on the radio here. So I want to get that to all of you right out of the gate here. Josh Hennig here on Sports Bash Saturday on 97.3 ESPN. Your nine players available today, according to reports, will be Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Danny Green, Tyrese Maxey, Dwight Howard, Tony Bradley, Isaiah Joe, Dakota Mathis, and Paul Reed. So what's interesting about those nine is that you have your three big men, so you didn't lose depth there, but you lost depth at the forward position. That's where it's going to be interesting. And I'm curious to see what the Sixers do today because you do have three of your starters. You have Simmons and Bede and Danny Green. Who end up being the other two starters? I'm curious to know, is it going to be Tyrese Maxey? Do they put Paul Reed in the starting lineup? Do they, I mean, do they go super big? and go Dwight and Joel together on the court. I mean, there's a couple of different ways they can go with this today. Because that's really where the loss is. Without Harris and without Thiebel, you lose part of your wing depth, your 3-4 positions. And without Shake Milton, you lose a guard. Seth Curry, you lose a guard. So you have your big man depth there with Howard and Bradley and MB, but you, you lost half your wing guys. So this is going to be an interesting game. That's going to be an interesting game to watch. Again, more details on that over at 973ESPN.com. Make sure you check in with the coverage from Paul Hudrick, Kevin McCormick, and Jason Blevins over at 973ESPN.com. They'll have more information on all the details coming up momentarily. 609-403-0973 is the text board to get on the conversation. 609-403-0973. Again, coming up at 1230. We will have coverage of the NFL playoffs. Of course, the first game of the day, the Buffalo Bills, their first home playoff game since the mid-90s, taking on the Indianapolis Colts, coached by Frank Reich, who was a member of those Buffalo Bills teams that went to four straight Super Bowls all those years ago. Of course, that'll be one of my picks. I'll be giving you about 12 minutes from now, presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. I can't overlook, though, it's been a wild and crazy week. And with the football coming up this weekend, we saw some more football news come down the line in the last 24 hours. So we know the Philadelphia Eagles, they've moved on from Rich Scangarello and Marty Morningweg. The Dallas Cowboys have fired their defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan, and their defensive line coach, Jim, Jim Tom Sula. That's a name flash from the past. Remember, he was... For a hot minute, the 49ers head coach. That was dumpster fire. Well, now you're looking around at Urban Meyer, according to reports, is starting to assemble a coaching staff to become the next head coach of the Jags. And the reason I bring all that up is because don't be surprised how crazy things get over the next couple weeks. We know that in the NFL, as soon as teams are eliminated from the playoffs, Coaches tend to take new jobs very, very quickly. And with Urban Meyer talking about assembling his roster right now, and with the situation going on with the Cowboys needing a D.C., the Eagles needing a defensive coordinator, the Eagles looking to reformat their offensive coaching staff, and you know Urban Meyer is going to get a high-level established name probably for his O.C. It's something that he's done throughout his entire career. Remember, he brought in Ryan Day to Ohio State, and before Ryan Day was there, he had guys like Tom Herman. And when Urban Meyer had his defensive coordinators, he was getting some pretty serious names. Like, for example, like Greg Schiano was his D.C. up there in Ohio State for a while. Urban Meyer is not afraid of the big-name coaches. So with the understanding that 
Urban Meyer is going to go get some big names. And you know Jerry Jones is unafraid to spend money when it comes to anything in this world. So you know he's going to go after a big-name defensive coordinator. How does that affect the Eagles' options if they're going to go defensive coordinator? Because while they they could stay in-house with Matt Burke, I personally like to see them go outside the organization because I think you need a fresh voice for this organization. You know, Doug Doug Peterson kind of let Jim Schwartz do whatever he wanted over there, and it was in some ways some would call it an arranged marriage. The idea that they hired Doug Peterson, but they also hired Jim Schwartz and said, "Hey, Doug, here's your DC. Hey, you guys met. All right, have a nice life." And yes, that arranged marriage, that that agreement got you a Super Bowl championship and got you a defense that was top 10 in the NFL in numerous categories over those five years, including categories such as quarterback pressures and third down conversions and red zone defense. But now you got to move on. You had a 4-11-1 season. Jim Schwartz is retiring. He's walking away from the NFL. So what do you do now? Well, what do you do now is you got to evaluate what makes sense for your team. And what makes sense for your team is not completely overhauling the defense because you've invested a ton of money into that defensive line. There is a log jam of money tied up into Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave and Brandon Graham. Yeah, you just renegotiated Malik Jackson's contract to give you some cap relief, but that's still money you have committed to him. You have a lot of investment in draft picks committed. You drafted Derek Barnett in the first round. Do you bring him back? You have invested resources and time in the Josh Sweat. You expect him to be back next year. Does Vinny Curry come back? There's a lot of questions with that defensive line, and whoever you hire as the next defensive coordinator is going to impact that line. But if Urban Meyer goes to the Jags and the Cowboys are as serious as Jerry Jones claims they are about winning next year, they're going to go out and spend a lot of money and get the best guy available. We know that, for example, someone like Chris Richard is traveling around talking to different teams about defensive coordinator openings. We know that Raheem Morris, he did a solid job down there in Atlanta, and he's a very underrated defensive mind in the NFL. We also know that there are other coaches out there who could possibly be in the conversation from fired coaching staffs like Gus Bradley, for example, with the Chargers. And that wasn't Gus Bradley's fault that he was fired. It was just because, you know, Lynn, uh, Anthony Lynn was let go. So the majority of that staff was have expiring contracts anyway. So there's a lot of options the Eagles can go with and be very careful when you watch how this coaching market plays out, because I'm telling you right now, I'm warning you from the beginning. There's a possibility that the Eagles will have to be very calculated in who they hire. Because if Urban Meyer is coming to the NFL, Urban Meyer is going to get the best coaches. He is going to convince Shad Khan, the owner of the Jags, to spend money on the coaching staff. It's what Urban Meyer did at Florida. It's what he did at Ohio State. He has a formula for winning. The guy's got an over 70% win percentage in college. He's got a system he runs. And part of that system is he gets high, high level of offense coordinators and defense coordinators. So that's one defense coordinator's off the market. If the Cowboys spend a lot of money, that's another defensive coordinator's off the market. So keep an eye out for what Dallas and Jacksonville do with their coaching staffs because that could impact what the Eagles do with their coaching staff for the 2021 season. 609-403-0973 is the text where I get to your text on the other side here on Sports Bash Saturday on 97.3 ESPN. NFL coverage beginning at 1 o'clock of a triple header. Of course, you have the Colts and the Bills, the first game on the triple header. I'll run back for you my picks from Football Friday yesterday on game night here on 97.3 ESPN. And we'll look ahead to the NFL schedule and take your texts at 609-403-0973. Here on Sports Bash Saturday, I'm Josh Hennig. You can follow me on Twitter at Josh Hennig on Twitter. This is 97.3 ESPN FM and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app. It's free. Thanks to First Bank of Seattle City. 
This is Sports Bash Saturday with Josh Hennig, live from the Matt Blatt Kia Studios. Here's Josh Hennig. Sports Bash Saturday being brought to you at weightliftinghq.com. Use my promo code RADIO10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Whether you need a bench or squat rack, kettlebells, dumbbells, cardio bands, resistance machines, along with mean, uh, resistance bands, cardio machines. Well, you do cardio bands too. Technically, the resistance band is a cardio band, but you can use it for muscle retention as well. I'm not going to get into a whole health or fitness training thing here, but weightlifthq.com has all the equipment you need for your health and fitness goals, whether you're somebody who wants to have a full at-home gym or you're somebody who wants to supplement your workout routines with a enough equipment for you to get the job done at home. Weightlifting.hq.com is here to help you reach those goals. Radio 10, check out for 10% off your entire order at weightliftinghq.com. 609-403-097. Get a couple texts in here before I give you run down my picks again. Uh, Nick from Brigantine follows up and says, Josh, can you clarify what the criteria is for the NBA to postpone a game? How many guys have to be out for the virus postponing the game as Nick and bring team. So Nick, real quick, because the Sixers game will be played today versus the Nuggets at 3 p.m. So the Sixers have nine eligible players. That is Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey, Isaiah Joe, Dwight Howard, Dakota Mathis, and Tony Bradley. Those were the six who were not in quarantine, who were not in the protocols. And then according to Woj, there were three players who have been cleared from the protocols, that being Joel Embiid, Danny Green, and... Paul Reed this morning. And the way it works, Nick and Brigantine, is you have to have a minimum of eight players. So the idea is that if you have eight players or more, you can play a game this season. If you are not within that minimum of eight players, the game will be postponed or canceled. And of course, we know that because the second half of the schedule has not been set yet by the NBA, the NBA will take games that are postponed in the first half of the season and move them into the second half of the season. But as of right now, the Sixers game at 3 o'clock will be played because they have a minimum of eight players. And you asked about the virus. The way it works is that you don't have to miss a game just because you tested positive. You can miss a game because of the contact tracing says that you were in close proximity to somebody. And as we know, a lot of times the virus takes four to eight days for it to show up in somebody's system for testing. So as a result, even if you show no symptoms, according to the protocols, you are still considered a close contact carrier of the virus, and you must quarantine and isolate from your teammates. So that's why the Sixers only have nine guys available today. Among the nine uh, will not be Tobias Harris and Shake Milton. Those are two of the players who are considered close contacts to Seth Curry, and they must quarantine for the next few days. They must pass consecutive positive tests after their mandatory quarantining is done, and as long as they pass those tests, they can play. But according to the protocols and according to what we've seen in the past, it looks like Tobias harris Shake Milton will not be available for Monday and possibly even Tuesday's game for the Sixers. Sixers play the Nuggets today, and then on Monday they play the Hawks. Tuesday night they play the Heat. 609-403-0973 609-403-0973 is the text for Tyler and Galloway says, Josh, I'm a huge Bucks fan. What are your thoughts on the game tonight? I think it's going to be as close as a lot of other analysts do. Hopefully a big win. Go Bucks, Tyler and Galloway. Here's the deal, Tyler. I don't really think it's going to be that close in the end. I think the final score is going to be a, a demonstrative win for the Buccaneers. I think it might be close early on because Washington has a, has a monster front. I mean, they got some freaks up there, like, you know, guys like Allen and Payne and Sweat and Kerrigan. They got some great guys on that defense. And I think that the defense will initially slow down Brady and the Bucks' offense. But I think eventually the Bucks' offense, which is way more efficient and higher functioning than Jalen Hurts' offense that we saw on Sunday night, where he had to rush for two touchdowns. The Bucs have better receivers. The Bucs have a better offensive situation than the Eagles do. If the Eagles were able to get some scores on Washington, I know the Bucs can because, let's be realistic, Washington does not have a great offense either. I think the Bucs pull away in this game. In fact, I mentioned on my football picks yesterday, I would even take the nine. I think they win this game by 10 points. 
I don't feel great about the over under, but I think they win this game. You know, something like a you know like a thirty to ten kind of game, or maybe a a twenty four to thirteen kind of game. One of those games where Brady and the Bucks just pull away at the end. So that was one of my picks yesterday, Tyler and Galloway. Appreciate you texting in the show and listening to 97.3 ESPN. Uh, FanDuel Sportsbook is your home for the same game parlays. Of course, you can take the spread, the money line, player props, and turn it all into one parlay. It's an exclusive opportunity for the NFL playoffs with FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get that right now when you use my promo code Hennig at sign up. That's promo code Hennig, H-E-N-N-I-G, with FanDuel Sportsbook. And you get the same game parlay insurance. Your first same game parlay is risk free. FanDuel's giving you that when you use my promo code Hennig, H E N N I G. And the same game parlay I gave you guys for today, that would be the Colts spread. They are six and a half point underdogs. And you parlay that with the over 50 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is my parlay for the day. You can make a same game parlay with that on FanDuel Sportsbook. Just to run down my picks again, I think the Bills win the game, but I think the Colts cover the spread. I think the Seahawks beat the Rams. I think the Buccaneers cover the nine versus the Washington football team today. I will not be on the air tomorrow, but you can catch Billy Schwein, Hunter Brody in the locker room from 10 a.m. to noon here on 97.3 ESPN or Sunday games. I think the Ravens hit the three, and they cover that minus three. And I wouldn't be surprised if they hit the 54 and a half spread as well. I think the Saints beat the Bears. And I think the Steelers run away from the Browns. I'm Josh Henning. This has been Sports Back Saturday. Thanks for listening. I will catch you all next week on game night on 97.3 ESPN. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Hennig all weekend long. And stay tuned to 97.3 ESPN.com for all your Sixers updates.